And the fire is not to destroy us, it's to make you stronger. But it will take people out. Because some people can't take it. I mean, when I, when I was in sports, when I was in sports, and they told me you couldn't do something, you just open the door, man, you get out of the way. Don't tell me I can't do it. I'm out here for one reason, to win. Come on. To do as much as I can. If I, do, if I don't win, it's not because I'm going to sit down and say, well, I give up. No, I, I, you know, I gave up once with my church. You're not, you're not giving up again. I'm not quitting. I quit, quitting is not, is not in, my, in the listing of my life. We're here to stay. Jesus never quit. If he went to the cross through all the, what he did, can we bear the cross that he's given us? Yeah, we can. Because bearing that cross is going to be is, is great for us. Because he, said, because he said through the whole Bible that one of the things, let me, let me, okay. I keep hearing this when it comes to tithing. We don't do a whole lot of it. We don't teach a whole lot of it. But I hear a lot of this. You don't know what it's like. You don't know what we're going through. We can't afford it. God will never, never, never bother you. Let me put it that way. For not paying your tithes. Never will. He will get on to you for not trusting him. The trust. See, he's not, he's not, he's not concerned about the, the, the money. He's concerned about the trust. You don't trust me. He said, you don't know what I have for you. If you just trust me, you don't know what, I, you don't know what it's like to trust God. I don't know what it's like myself to go, totally go out on a limb and go all the way yet. But I'm hearing God says, you need to come out a little further. Bring the saw with you in case I tell you to cut it off. You say, you know, I mean, so uh, just take it for what, it's, for what it is. God's, God's going to talk to you. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. And it looks like you're not going to make it. <laughs> I've been there. Done that. We may go there again. I don't know. But I was there so long, it didn't matter to me. Whether I went broke or not, it didn't matter. Because I knew I was coming out on the other end. Yea, though I walk. Where? He didn't say walk in it, did he? Why? Because in it, you stop. You throw out your tents, you begin to live there. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. What did he tell you not to do? Don't fear no evil. Don't fear none. Don't fear none. And let me talk to you for a few moments. You know, I've only got about a half an hour uh, to talk to you about living out of your spirit. You've got to live out of your spirit. Yes. Quit living out of your soul. Too many, the, you know, too many people living out of their soul. You can't live out of your soul. The Bible said man's goings are of the Lord. How then do you understand your own ways? You can't. You can't understand your own ways. You can't understand it. You'll never understand it. How come I'm lacking and everybody else isn't? Why is it? If you, if you come to the point of trusting God, wherever you're lacking, mm-hmm. whatever's in your life, not just money, whatever is lacking in your life, yes. if you will take that and give it to God and stay out there with God and stay there and stay there and stay there and just keep going, God, I trust you. If I go down, you're going with me because mm-hmm. you said you never leave me nor forsake yes. me. No matter what happens, you're going with me. And since we're going to go down together, let's just go. But you have to begin to trust him with everything you got. If it's money, if there was a problem, you got to trust him with it. Whatever it is, your family, give them to God. Amen. And you'll begin to see the difference. And you'll see this in, in, in uh, Proverbs, what is it, 1? Uh, let me get my little book here. We're going to travel through this pretty fast. Because i got to get you to the point where I, wa- where I want to show you something. Uh, Proverbs 1 and 9. You no, know, excuse me. Excuse me. We're, we're getting to Proverbs. Romans 1 and 9. Just the first part. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit or out of my spirit. And we know that John chapter 4, verse 24, it says God is a... Spirit. Now, if God is a spirit, that means I am a spirit. Yes, yes. Combined and made in his image. If he's a spirit, I am a spirit. 
And I, I don't know how many pastors that I, I listen to, they say it this way. We're body, soul, and spirit. You are not body, soul, and spirit. You have a body. You are a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. You are not a body. This is a tabernacle. This is my house I live in while I'm on this earth. Yeah. It's going to die. The day is coming when it's going to die. And I've noticed I've wore, I have worn out in my 50 years of drywall, of all the heavy work that I've done, probably millions and millions of pounds that I've carried in my lifetime. I mean, I used to carry this stuff all the time. And sometimes Wayne, when he was even younger, I'd put him on the back end of some, some of the uh, double 12s or 5 eighths, which is probably about 250 pounds. And you can be, feel that boy back there says, come on, Wayne, come on, come on. You feed him and just, just sort of staggered behind that thing. A little heavy. And once, when my daddy was 50 years, in his 50s, I had him come down and help me one time with just one sheet. We had to carry it from one building to the next, and the wind was blowing pretty good, 12 foot long. And when we stepped outside, and I'm feeling this thing going like this, it, it becomes a kite. And it's trying to pick up the wind that's out there. And it, and it blew him all the way around. But Daddy was just a little bitty guy. You know, a little bitty guy. Probably weighed not much over 130 pounds when you see him. Huh? Just a little bitty guy. He didn't weigh as much as that sheet that we were, we were carrying. You know? And it was just, and he was, and all of a sudden, but take him up in the air because of the wind, you know? But I've done this all my life. Most of the times, I'd carry these things by myself. Because it's just the way I was. You just work. When you went to work, you work. And not knowing what it was doing to my body. So we're going to put it back together. Make it work. Because, see, I'm not taking this body to heaven. No. My spirit's perfect. Yes. When I step out of this, this one day, I'm going to walk into my perfect body. Yes. It's called my spirit man. It's going to be, I'm going to walk into it. But, see, what is God saying? He's asking us. I want you to begin to live out of your spirit. If God is a spirit, then what he is, I am. Because God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And uh, let me, let me, let me, we, wife and I was traveling to Fresno the other day. And I think it's Bill Winston. I think it's, if I remember, I wrote this down. I may have not written it down, though, exactly. It went down. When he stepped out on the waters, he didn't step out on the waters. He stepped out on his faith. That's what he was walking on. We got to remember that. Spirit walked on that water, not that body. The body had to do what the Spirit was saying. Too many people say, well, look at But he was Jesus. Sure he was. Who are you? Representative of Jesus. You're his child. You, he belongs to you, and you belong to him. Yes. And, it's, and so, see, what, what, it has to, what it has to come to is Joshua 1 and 8. It's gotta, you've got to come to this. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate upon it day and night. Day and night that you come observe, look into. Look into it. You're just giving people hope. Well, why not? <laughs> Dear God, yeah. if you can't give people hope, what, you know, why are you preaching if you can't give them at least hope? Because the faith is, faith is substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But see, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate upon it. Here's where it is. Meditate means to mutter, to speak to oneself. Yes. I made a big mistake when I first began to learn this. Years ago. And I began to tell people what, what I'm about to do. And they would laugh at you. And all of a sudden you'd give up on it. Because you didn't see anything in a few days. You gave up. But when I tell it to you now. It's because I've already lived it. What I've lived. I can tell you. It's going to work. And it's going to work well. When God says it. He means it. See the Bible says. Uh, where's it at Lord. I think it's in uh, Numbers 23, 19, okay? That God is not a man that he can lie. 
nor the Son of Man that he has to repent. Has he not said it? Will he not do it? Has he not spoken it? Will he not bring it to pass? Then, he, then, then I put this there. Then he said, I have received commandment to bless, and I shall bless. I thought, okay, this is God. This is him. He can't lie. If he said he's going to bring you through, he's going to bring you through. If he says he's going to meet your need, he has to meet your need. But he needs you to trust him. He, he can only walk in faith. He can't walk where your flesh is. He can walk in faith. Faith is the substance of. Without faith, Hebrews eleven six. 6, without faith it is impossible, 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 impossible to please him. You can't please him without it. But here's what, I, I'm, I'm, here's what I want to, I'm bringing this to you. I want you to see this. Never heard this this way. But I began to study some words. Isaiah 40, 38. Is it 38? No, 28. Excuse me, 28, because there's no 38. 28 to 31, because it only goes to 31. Has I not known, has I not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord of the, of the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Watch this. But they. What does it say? What, what is it saying? What? What is it saying? But they to do what? All right. Explain this one to me. Let's go to a restaurant, okay? It's a little big, big, but okay. Yes. The waiter comes to you. May I help you? What would you, de- what would you desire? But it didn't say people did it. It said they that wait upon the Lord. Oh, that's right. Didn't say people did it. They that wait upon the Lord. It's not do I go to him and say, Lord, what do you need? What do you want? How can I help you? What's your desire today? You know? Normally, he's the giver, right? He's the giver of life. So I put this away. Went to the book to find out what it means. Too many times we think, you know, I'm going to wait up on the Lord. Wait, I'm just going to sit down and wait. Didn't mean that. No. Didn't mean do nothing. How many birds that's up in the tree can get the worm that's on the ground if he waits for the worm to crawl up the tree. You're not going to get it. Listen here. They that wait upon the Lord shall do what? Renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run, not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Have you ever sang that song? Huh? You sing it all the time in the church. And nobody put it in its proper place. I've never heard this until I begin to do some word searching. Begin to put it there. What do you think the word wait means? I know it, it, it's not a trick question. I'm asking a question. You know, I was just like me. I didn't know. I didn't know. I, I, so I, so I, went, I went to the Greek and the Hebrew. I wanted to bring a look, look at both sides. What's, what, what does it mean? Here's what it means. Let me read it. But they that gather together with the Lord shall renew their strength. They that gather together with the Lord. That word wait means together. Listen to me. They that gather together with the Lord shall renew their strength. They that gather together with the Lord shall renew their strength. They that gather together with the Lord shall renew their strength. I thought, okay. Then it says, and it has a great expectation upon it. But also it says, they that gather together, together, like twisting. I said, okay. What happens to to wicker furniture? What happens with wicker furniture? The more strands of the wicker that I have to put together to twist the stronger it becomes. What happens if I take one piece off by itself? 
it's weak. So when you don't come to church, guess what you're doing? You're separating yourself from God and you become one strand and you become weak yeah. spiritually. Yeah. You can't make it. You know, I can make it without. No, you can't. I'm reading you the word. Yes. I'm reading you the word. I, in fact, I'll even take you to, to, uh, over to Hebrews 10. When the Bible says, provoke one another to love. We'll do it to do what? Forsaking not the assemblies of yourself together. Provoke. What is the word? Pro, then provoke. It is all of a sudden it begins to come up. What does provoke mean? So I, so I had to look provoke up. You know what it means? It means to sharpen. Iron sharpeneth iron. People sharpens one another countenance. Proverbs says this. So when we're together with the church, let me put it this way, all, all this time, one young man back here, I'm just a tad older than Wayne, just a, just a few years, but I noticed the first time him and I went out golfing, we wasn't sharp together, not a bit, but I know more about him now, and he knows more about me after being together a while, after we gathered, we, what, we begin to twist our lives together, we twist them. Together, together, stronger and stronger and stronger. What he's saying, if the church doesn't come together of twisting, gathering together, and become that wicker, that's strong, that you twist yourself together, no matter what comes against the church, you get stronger and not weaker. But if you separate yourself, you become weak. And you'll fall. Because if I take one strand of the wicker off and try to put something on it, it'll, it'll, it'll crush it. But the more wicker that I twist together. The day's coming when I can put, I can put a house on top of it if I needed to. Because you can twist that much together. What it was needed. And I begin to see this. They that wait upon the Lord, not waiting, they that gather themselves together with the Lord's people. That's the one that's going to get strong. That's the one that can stand. And if we've ever needed this in our last day, we need it now. We need this now. That we get together, that we twist ourselves together, that we don't run, run off and find some little thing to keep us out of church on a Sunday morning, but we run to the, to the building. We can't wait for the doors to open to get there. Yes. Why? Because we're twisting ourselves together. We're sharpening one another together. We're sharpening and become that. Because, see, nobody likes a dull pencil. You can't hardly read it when you, when, you, when you write. But a sharp pencil, it makes a Pacific. You can write with it real well. Sharp. You know what's taking place. But see, that's what people, too many, because the Bible says in Hebrews, go to Hebrews 10, uh, what is it, 25? I uh, See right there? Forsaking not, forsaking the assemblies of ourselves, not forsaking, not forsaking. What is that, that word? What do, you, what do you think that means? That's something you better get to. Yeah. Said, so don't do it. Don't forsake yourself. In other words, do not untwist yourself from the church. The church is the strongest thing you've got. A lot of people say, well, no, no, uh, the government's my strongest thing. No, you got a weak government. You got the weakest government you've ever had in your life. And you're going to have a weaker one every year until Jesus comes. She's going to fall apart. She's not going to make it. I don't care if you're Republican, you're independent, Democrat, what do you call yourself, whatever you want to call yourself. But if you're not in church, in Jesus Christ, giving yourself to Him, giving yourself to, to the church, then you become weak and you'll be tore up and taken out in these last days. And so at the end of the two years, God began to tell me, at the end of the two years, the people that's going to be in this church that'll wicker themselves together, twist themselves together, that'll not forsake themselves and get here and get here and get here and get here, we will become so strong that the world out here, this world out here, Merced, will envy this church because how strong she is. They'll envy the church. But see, the, the, the church is envying the world for some reason. They have nothing we want. Nothing. Well, they got a lot of money. Belongs to me. Come on. Come on. Belongs to me. It's coming to church by, because the Bible says the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the yes. for us. But it's not going to people that's, un, that, that's not after God. If you're not chasing God, the money's not chasing you. Right. But if you're chasing God, that money's chasing you. 
See, the more faithful you are to God, the more faithful these things will come after you. They'll come after you and overtake you. Because the Bible said these blessings should come upon you and overtake for the simple reason. Faithfulness. God loves faithfulness. Loves it. He loves it more than anything else. And so I begin to see this. I begin to see this. That, that provoke. See, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Spirit of man is God's candle that you have inside you. It says, searching all the inward parts of the belly. In other words, of the, your soul area is searching everything in there. What have you placed in there? What have you in there? Because the Bible says, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You don't know where that one's at? Everybody knows that one. Proverbs 20, 27. Because I want you to see this. Okay. So if, if, the, if the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inner parts of the belly, if it's searching, 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 finding what I, what, what I need to be, be doing, finding out. But see, if you never spend time allowing it to search you out, then that's not the Holy Spirit. That's your spirit. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. It didn't say the spirit of God. It is his spirit. It put inside you. But you don't put him to work. You're living out of your soul. Living out of your soul is not where God wants you to live. Because see, the Bible says the man's goings are of the Lord. If my, if my goings are of the Lord, then what's taking place? Then I have to listen to the spirit of man where I'll know which way to go. Not man. See, that's where people vote. These, these politicians get up there and they promise you all these things. And the moment they get in the office, they forget what their promises are. They forget who you are. Yeah. They're there for one reason. How much money can I get? Self. That's it. Self. That's it. Self. Thanks. Motivation. Yeah. That's it. But they want your vote. They'll promise you the moon until you get there. And they want to give you the dirt once they get there. <laughs> yeah. So I trust none of them. Mm -hmm. But you got to pray for all of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I don't like that part. I'm like, God, that's, not, that's really not right. You want me to pray for these guys, and I can't trust them. That is true. Your one trust is me. Your one trust is me. You can't trust him. Too many people trust their dollar greater than they trust God. They'll chase dollars more than they chase God. You got to get out of that mode. That don't work. I used to live there. That don't work. Wasn't fun chasing a dollar after a dollar after a dollar. And when you got the dollar, for some reason, you needed two. When you got the two, you needed four. When you got the four, you needed eight, six. To go. It's just, you need more and more and more and more. Why? Because you're chasing the wrong thing. You chase God and all your needs shall be met. Why, did he, why would he say that? My God shall, my God shall, my God shall meet your needs according to his riches and glory. All your need. Not just some of it, all of it. But see, we chase the dollar more than we chase God. And it's easy to do because this world turns on the dollar. You don't have a dollar? You'll be down here living on the street corner, huh? Under the trees. Yeah. I know that. But I have one thing in my mind that's been said that God said he's never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread for food. I don't have to beg for it. Money cometh. Come money cometh. Money cometh. Now, Trevor said something about this morning about, you know, planting seeds. This is seed time. This is seed time. I want, you to see, I want you to know that one thing. That though my spirit is searching, searching, but see, one thing that I do not want to add to it, Proverbs 18, 21, death and life is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it is going to eat the fruit of that. What are you afraid of? If you're afraid of anything, that's what you speak. Because the Bible says God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and a sound mind. So if he hadn't given it to me, guess where I picked it up at? Yeah. I'm looking at things through my soul, through these windows that God has me. If I'm looking through these windows called the eyes, I'm seeing things not working out. I see the lack. I see the sick. I see the people going to hell. My family's broken. Everything's going down the hill. They give me a letter, so we're losing your property. You're losing your house. You're losing everything about you. You're losing it. 
And then we go into panic mode. Because we think panic mode now is where we got to go. Instead of going into word mode and we get on your face before God and stay there until you get an answer from God. And stay there. Stay there. That's living out of your spirit. If you don't think that's possible, you have never tried it. That's where you got to go. That's where you have to live. Because how, how you perceive things. Death and life is not talking about just me dying. That it may be something good coming in my direction. And we begin to speak death to it, then you just shut it off. If I speak life to it, I just open the door for it. If this is from God, then speak life to it, get the mind of God, and begin to speak life into it, and watch God open the door for it. What do you think he said in, in, in uh, Mark? Was it Mark 4? Forgot the, the, the number, Mark 4. He said, so is the kingdom of God. So is the kingdom of God. As if a man would cast seed in the ground. So is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God works this way. This is how it works. What he's talking about is my spirit. So is the kingdom of God that's here. Here's where the kingdom of God is. It's my spirit, man. Kingdom right here. It's not up there. It's right here. Kingdom, by the said, the kingdom of God is within you. So he's right here. He's right here. So is the kingdom of God as if a man would cast seed in the ground. And he sleep night and day. And he does not know how the plant grows up and produces first the blade, then the ear, then the full stalk. And then it said, he said, you'll never know how this is done. You don't need to know it. But I do know one thing. So is the kingdom of God. I watched this in the natural do this. Then now in the spirit it's going to do the same thing. You understand that? Spirit's going to do the same thing. But I've got to plant the seed in, the, in my spirit first. So I've got to get it in there. How do I plant it? I've got to take the word of God and meditate upon it day and night until I begin to see myself in that word. See it. And when they tell me, no, it won't happen, I do not accept no. I won't do it. I went to build a house once for a wife and I and the kids. Went down there and they said no. I said, don't tell me that because I'm going to build a house. They said, well, we went through the whole thing. What we'll do if you do it? I said, get ready because I'm going to build a house. I'm going to build a house. I heard from God. Don't tell me what I don't know already. But see, that's man's idea. And so I'd go back. I went back. I went back. And I got back. And told them, you might as well give me the permit. I'm going to build a house. They said, without the permit, you, you, know, you have no money coming. You have nothing. I said, don't tell me what I don't have. I've already got the money. i got everything ready. i got the land. i got everything. You, you better give me the permit. I will build a house. And they came up with this one thing. Well, we can do maybe one more thing to see if it's, the land is, re, is, is available or priable to where you can build a house on it. I said, what we got to do? Go home, get a backhoe, dig a hole 12 foot deep, put water in it. And when you do that, call us up and in two days we'll come out, see how the water goes down. Because see, they said the water won't go down. You can't build a house here. Water won't go down because we lived in hard pan. I said, okay. Went home, called up the backhoe guy, dig the hole. He dug it up. I put water in it until I had a bunch of water. Called him up and it came out. Here was her words. I guess we're going to have to rewrite our book because what, we, what just happened on your land is not what our book says. Who said their land is not that? God knows how to take water out of a hole. He knows how to dry it up because he wants God speaks. Now it's up to you to trust what you've heard and do what you've heard and don't back down no matter what anybody says. I've had to do this a lot with a, with a city up here. Many times. I get in her face. Why? Once I hear from God, don't try to get in my face and tell me it won't happen. Because it's going to work. Yes. It's going to work. Because when God says it, it's going to work. It will work. But see, this is what he's saying. They that gather together, they that wait upon the Lord, they that gather together, we begin to build our strength. Build our strength. We become stronger and stronger. The more we meet together, the more twisted we are together with the Word and one another, and we become so strong that nothing can shake us together. Nothing can shake us apart. Nothing can run us out. We're here to stay. This church is here to stay. At the end of two years, we'll be stronger than we are right now. At the end of two years, we will be more 
uh, pliable to the will of God and to the Word of God than we are right now. We're going to be more willing to do what God said. Why? Because for the next two years, we're going to practice, practice, listening to the Spirit of God and doing what the Spirit of God says, whether you understand it or whether you don't. Well, what if I don't know if it's the will of God? Take a walk or two. Let me show you. Let me show you. When, I, when, when God speaks to me and he said, do this, what I do then, I begin to go that direction. At any time, at any time in there, I get a check that something's not working. What I do is go back. God, did I, did I understand you right or wrong? Is this direction, that road, or was it that road? Which one? I want you to go that direction, but when you got up to this point, I needed you to cut off and go over this direction, not stay there. You've been spending a lot, a lot of times in your life. You'll see this. A lot of times. See, how, how we begin to come out of this, back, back, back to uh, tithing. Wife and I, well, see, we didn't know death and life was in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I didn't know that was in the Bible. I did, had no idea. We was, at a, we was at a corner. We were going to have to file bankruptcy. It was all over with. It was, it was, we were finished. So I began to talk about it. We're going to have to file bankruptcy. We can't make it. There's no way. We got more bills than we got money. We, I mean, we've got thousands of dollars we owe, and we ain't got no money. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Some guy named Jack Reddick came to town. My wife, I was a Christian life center, you went to him to some other church. Um, Seminary God? Went to, doesn't matter where he went, she heard him. Went and heard. She came back and said, here's what the word says. If you're going to trust God, you better get out on a limb. Not too many people want to crawl on the limb and trust God. Said, if you want to trust God, here's how you do it. You pay God tithing on what you want to make and not what you're making. I thought, hey, oh, that won't work. That won't work. I mean, dear God, if I do that, I have nothing left. Because I needed, at that time, my bills were $5,000 a month, just my bills. That wasn't paying, that's all the people I had to pay, everything all going around it. I need way more money than that. But I need at least five just to pay this mortgage, that bill, this one, and that one. Five. This years ago was a lot of money. Today it's still pretty good money, right? Still pretty good. And I said, that means I got to take out that much money, pay it the first of the month, and trust God. You know something? It didn't take me long to figure out yes or no. I said, we're going broke. What does it matter? What does it matter? Let's go, let's go broke trusting God. We stepped out, we stepped out, and began to do what God commanded through his word to do. Not because the guy said it, because, of, because the word says it. If you're going to trust God, trust him. I think within a month, girl, we, I was in Madeira doing some work. And a guy came up to me and said, you know something? I got all this work over here, nobody to do it. You want to do my work for a while? Yeah. Yeah. And I told him, I said, you know something? We've been going to go through the whole thing. I just, I just built a house. This is impossible too, Shireen. This is impossible. You already know this. I just built a house of 2,000 square feet for $20,000. You can't even buy a fireplace anymore for $20,000. <laughs> a good one. You can't. You can't even buy the kitchen for $20,000. You can't even buy the, the, the bathrooms for $20,000. Can't do it. I built the whole house. And I began to tell him, he said, man, if you can build a house like that, he said, why don't you build some houses then? I said, I have no money. He said, I'll give you the money to build them. I said, okay. I said, I don't have no land to build them on. He said, I'll buy the land, I'll give you the money, you build a house, and you pay me back. I said, we got a deal, brother. Real quick, I built the houses. And it got us up to almost level. And we took off. I have never stopped yet. I've never quit trusting God since that day for the simple reason. 
One thing I did, I twisted myself to when the doors were open every Sunday morning and Sunday night, those doors open, I would get in there and mingle with the people. I want to hear what God is saying. I want to hear, I want, I want to know what's taking place. I'm twisting myself together with God because he said to do it, do it. I'm twisting myself together with God. Forsake not this. So I got there and got there over and over. Then sometimes the years would go by, a year, two years, and never miss one service. We were faithful to God. And he knew it. I could get in his face and say, I'm faithful to you. Then he said, I'm faithful to you too then. I could get in his face. I've done it. I could get in his face and said, God, I've done this. How come it's not working? He said, shut your mouth and it'll work. I had to learn how to talk. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. How do you speak? What are you speaking over, over your life? What are you speaking over it? Life? Life? Life. No death. You keep speaking life. God will open up a door. See, your angels, the Bible said the angels hearken to the voice of the word. Angels hearken to the voice of the word. I have to give it voice. The angels listen to it. And if I keep speaking that word, the angels now will begin to find some way to bring that to pass, to bring it to my life. They'll bring it to my life. If I keep talking it, and keep talking it. You've got to learn how to live out of your spirit. Once you learn how to live out of your spirit, then you begin to listen to it, and you begin to talk like your spirit man talks. And when you talk like your spirit man talks, you don't talk weak, you don't talk broke, you don't talk anything else of what the Word says. Sure, people's not going to like you. So what? They don't like you anyway. They see you coming over to this Holy Ghost church. Oh, you go to that church. I told some people just a couple weeks ago, they tell me what their, their pastor in this town, their pastor said, no more of the Holy Spirit in the, in, the, in the audience. You can't do it. No more praying in tongues in the audience. No more this in the audience. And those people were brought up in a Holy Ghost church, lived in a Holy Ghost church, dancing church, speaking in tongues. And I said, you're still there? How come you didn't get them walk out? Get into a church where they believe this. You know better. Why are you there? They had no answer. Are they still there? Yeah. Why? They've lost the sight of what life really is. They've lost it. They've lost it. If the Holy Ghost can't move, you're in the wrong place. If he's not the, if he's not the one that's ruling your church, you're in the wrong place. i got to close. My 30 minutes are up. But I want to bring this into you. They that wait upon the Lord, they that gather together by twisting themselves together, sharpens one another and before you know it, you become so strong that nothing can tear you apart. All things are possible to them that believe. Greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. Quit seeing yourself small. Quit seeing yourself down and out. I'm the only one in my family. So what? If you get out of this, I'm the only one, God and you is a majority. That's all you need is God. And once you got him... You've got the strength of heaven behind you. Whatever heaven can do, you can do. Let me give you the last one. Proverbs 4 and 20. All the way down to 24. My son, my daughter, attend to my words. Incline Unto what I'm saying. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy, for they are life, and those that find them, and how much health? How much? All your flesh. Then he said this, verse 23, keep thy heart with all, for out of it flows the issues of life. Then he said, put away a forward tongue. Yes. Slap that thing once in a while. Yes. <laughs> you quit that. You're not going to talk like that. You know, you know better than that. Come on. Put it away, he said. Put it away. Get rid of it. Quit talking that way. If you'll do this, if you'll do what I'm saying this morning, your life will change. Will it change overnight, Pastor? Well, ask God about it. You know what it is? The whole thing is one, hinges upon one thing. 
your character. Joseph was sent to prison to check his character. What are you in your prison right now? What are you like? Screaming, hollering, because everything is wrong, because, you know, no one treats you right? Why don't you be like Joseph? Your character is under, under siege, and you're being tested which way you are really going to go. Right character, right paths. You're coming out. You are, you are the blessed. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You're blessed coming in, you're blessed going out because you are the blessed of God. Because the greater one lives in you, he puts you over, you have his ability. Begin to think his thoughts, talk his, talk, talk his words, and your life will change. In the next two years, we will see a great change in this church. We're going, we're going up. We're going up. We're going up. It's like, you know, when we lived out on 20 acres. Every morning, every night, I had to get up and go out there and milk brownie. I brought her in, and we set the milk on the counter. Guess what happens if you set the milk on the counter very long? What happens? Things separate in it. The cream comes up. What happens if you take the cream off the top, put in a little churner and begin to churn it? What happens? What? Now tell me how God makes, takes green grass, puts it in a cow, comes out with white milk, with yellow butter. He did it for us. He does the impossible. You think he can't do an impossible in your life then? He'll work. Everything he does is to the tops. All good and perfect gifts are from above. No less. I got to quit. I got to quit. I got two minutes over my 30 minutes. Please stand.